Hello and welcome. I am Bonnie Lipheart, and we're on location at the Alabama A&M, which is, of course, a part of Auburn University. Now, I don't know if they wanted me to say that or not, because uh, we're, they're a separate entity in a lot of ways, in most of the ways. But what is happening this week here on campus at A&M is a very exciting thing, and that is the 4-H Congress, the State Congress. And we have the person that is in charge, and that's Dr. Lamar Nichols from Auburn. And uh, Dr. Nichols, uh, tell me a little bit about the State 4-H Congress and leadership conference that's going on this particular week. Well, it's, we're glad to be at Alabama A&M. Alabama A&M uh, is a uh, we cooperate with them from Auburn University as part of the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Mm -hmm. Our state congress is a, an annual event that we have and is, we've incorporated now a leadership component into that. Historically, it was predominantly a uh, competitive event or uh, an event that was designed as a, I like to say, it's a celebration of the education that preceded it. Uh, in other words, there were uh, young people who learned a lot of things about their 4-H projects and they were in some type of uh, competitive arena uh, that got them from a county to a district level and on to the state level. And this is the state component of that, but uh, I don't like for people to perceive that this is just a competitive event. This is uh, an event which marks the culmination of a year's project work for our 4-Hers who are in the competitive track of uh, the State Congress and Leadership Conference. Now, uh, the Leadership Conference is incorporated now because there are a lot of young people in 4-H in Alabama who cannot participate at this level with, or they choose not to even. A lot of young folks are not as competitive as others, and we, but they are still very much leadership oriented. And we're about uh, uh, young people who are learning life skills and learning about citizenship and leadership in 4-H. And so our young people who uh, do not choose or uh, didn't qualify for some reason to be in a competitive track at this event still can learn a lot about leadership. Uh, we have a lot of concurrent tracks going on uh, that have to deal with leadership for these young people to participate in. And many of them may come and see some of the competitive events and want to become more involved uh, because of what they've seen at State Congress. So we have a very busy two to three days here at Alabama A&M's campus, and uh, we look forward to it. Uh, it's going to be a little hot, and we're going to have a lot of things going on, but we'll have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Now, you are saying that there will be actually some here that are following the leadership conference uh, track that are not necessarily in the competitive track? That's correct. They will be here to, uh, to obtain uh, information to go through educational programming that has to do with leadership and uh, there are different tracks uh, as you can see from the program that we have involved and our young people will choose those according to their desires. Um, and, and some of these have uh, different uh, type of educational programs and we want the young folks to match them to their needs or to their desires and choose that. And the ones who are in the competitive tracks are going to be pretty busy with their competitions. Uh, especially some of these competitions are, are pretty rigorous. Uh, for instance, the, the chicken queue or the chicken barbecue competition, um, we have to put an upper time limit on it because it takes a long time, as you know, to, to properly uh, cook chicken on a grill. So they're out there in the heat and the humidity for hours trying to do the best job they can with cooking chicken. And we have a lot of sponsors, a lot of partners with this, these activities and events, and we appreciate them very much. Well, you know, I'd like to hear some of the people that are involved and some of the different things that are going on now than it did, that it did a few decades ago in the 4-H Club. It's soaring and exploring. You're now exploring a whole new world that we didn't know exist in the days I was in 4-H Club and also for you. So some, some of the things that you're doing that are different. Right. Some of the things we do that are different... Uh, you know, I used to saying a lot of people expect with, with 4-H that you're working with traditional, the traditional things in 4-H. Some people even have a little rhyme, they call it sows, cows, and plows, uh, and sowing and things like that. But we're a whole lot more than that today. 
our, uh, we're supposed to be in touch at the grassroots level with our clientele, which is the youth of the citizenry of the state of Alabama, and we are in touch with those. We do needs assessments, and we look at the things that they need us to do in order to help them develop and to grow and to obtain skills regarding leadership and citizenship. Some of the newer things that you may be surprised uh, that we are doing is we work a lot with science and technology. We have some uh, groups who are working with uh, global positioning systems, things like that. And to connect that to our heritage and our base a little bit, we have, um, we're going to be looking at some farming and space programming before too long. And that's real interesting. We do a lot of work with the Space Center, Dr. Tony Cook. Our specialist who works with science and technology has a good relationship with the Space Center and is working some with NASA and he is working at developing a space institute at Auburn University now. So that's one of the newer areas. Another area we do a lot of work, um, Mr. Chuck Hill and Dr. Molly Gregg, our specialist on staff there at Auburn, they do a lot of work with um, the military programs and we do uh, work with uh, around on the basis, but we also have an initiative lately, and Alabama is one of the pilot states with this in the nation because of the number of deployed people we have with the Guard and the Reserves. We do work with 4-H uh, programming targeted at the young people who are children of our deployed uh, soldiers over in the Middle East, and that's a great program that we're doing. They have very unique needs. Uh, a lot of times people are not in touch with their needs and when you talk about guards and reservists you're not able to go in and corner an audience so to speak by going to a base you have to these are uh, onesies and twosies and threesies out there they're hard to it's hard to get a handle on them and we have to do a lot of work trying to just identify the young people that we can work with simply because for security reasons which is the right way of doing things, they won't give you a list because uh, you shouldn't be able to identify the people who are missing a parent at home. So that's one of our newer programs that we're working with a lot. And, and uh, that's going to have some tremendous benefits, I think. Some other things we do traditionally, of course, we do the livestock projects, the horse projects, the family and consumer science projects. We have a new project that's going into working with the school teachers around the state called Junior Master Gardener Program. And it's a great program for our young people to uh, get involved with gardening. And we have a, a, a young man named Shane Harris who works out of Tallapoosa County, and he is doing a great job as the state coordinator for that program. He's training teachers all over the state, and they're going to present this program as part as a school enrichment program to their students in elementary school. And they'll become a junior master gardener. And you've probably heard about the Master Gardener program through the county agents around the state. This is aimed at the younger audience. That is so exciting. Now, how did you get involved? I know you have uh, the, some of the original things, the bicycle safety and the uh, photography and some of those things that we had had uh, in addition to the sewing and cooking and uh, breads exhibit. And I love the fact that you're having chicken queue because they need to learn how to do that too. Right. These skills, these skills are skills that any young person can take with them and right. use them throughout life. And, and they all relate back to, to teamwork, dedication, discipline, responsibility, uh, ability to communicate, ability to get along with others, caring, those kinds of things are all the life skills that we work with across the board in 4-H regardless of the project area. I was at the state horse show last week and someone was talking about the horse show not being exactly like, ran exactly like a, a, a sanctioned horse show with one of the horse associations or something like that. But I don't look at it as a horse show. I look at it as a, an educational activity, experiential educational activity with young people. For me, it's a young people gathering who are learning the, the horse just happened to be a teaching tool. Mm -hmm. And they're learning responsibility, they're learning dedication, they're learning discipline, they're learning how to get along with one another and these kinds of things. Uh, the horse just, the project just helps facilitate that. I got involved with 4-H quite a few years ago. I grew up in Chilton County. I was involved with the livestock projects. I grew up in a rural atmosphere. 4-H uh, and church pretty much my social life, much like you. Yes. Uh, it was a very valuable component of my life. It made me aware of opportunities uh, that the world had to offer that I would have never known about had it not been for 4-H. Um, 
And then I became a county agent, and I worked with uh, Alabama Cooperative Extension System for several years, went back to grad school, and uh, moved into administrative roles since then. It's a great way to make a living. It's a wonderful uh, way to work yourself through life. You'll never get wealthy, but if you like young people, it's just a great way to make a living. I have some positions open, too. They can go to our website and find them. Uh, I'm looking for a few County really good agent. people. County uh, regional extension, extension agents, mm -hmm. the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Just use a search engine and get on there. Uh, if you're interested in a job like that and look at the position description and see if you fit and send in your application. They close later on in July. Mm -hmm. Well, you, as you mentioned, my church and my 4-H was my social life. It was my only life other than my family. I'll never forget the first time I went to 4-H camp. I was so short, I still go all the way down, but not all the way up. But they had to stand me up on the teacher's table to, in order to be taller than the rest of people. And I was the song leader. My dad was a singer, and I sang my mom. Well, he was also a preacher. But um, I was going to our state conference, like we called it, uh, the state uh, congress. And... Uh, I was put up there to sing and lead the singing. I looked out at those 5,000 eyes and I totally didn't remember my name, why I was there, what song I was going to sing, and ran off the stage crying, I can't do it. My main leader got me back up on stage and she played the piano that I was supposed to be playing too. I sang the song and got through it. All week they were saying, there's the girl, make a fool out of herself. And you know, that made me have a decision that week that I'm going to, number one, learn to speak in front of groups. And I learned it in the 4-H club by doing so many projects in front of the home demonstration agents, we used to call them in those days, and, um, and then to anything they would have. And from that, I have now spoken around the world, written eight books, had a television show for 17 years, and interviewed over 5,000 people on television. It all came because I saw a new world from 4-H Club, because I just lived out in a cotton patch in the uh, backwoods of Arkansas, and it got to go to the governor's mansion. Now, Clinton wasn't there at the time. It was a little before, a lot before his time. But it was so exciting just to see a world I'd never seen before. And I think that the county agent uh, and the, extent, the whole extension office was so loving and caring, and uh, they also were strict in that if you didn't do thing projects uh, accurately, you didn't get to win. You know, I mean, you had to be, I, I mostly sewed and had poultry and things that you'd have on the farm. And my brother and I had a cow and a uh, calf. And so, uh, but I learned if you're not attentive to detail, then you can't just smooth it over. It's going to, it's important to do those things. I learned discipline, commitment, determination, and I will forever be indebted to the 4-H Club and what it did in my life and all the people that were around me that uh, back in the olden days, then they put your, the county champion and boy and girl on the on a calendar right. and so I don't know if they're still doing such a thing as that but it was I, I think I still have a calendar I know I have uh, pictures from those times but I think the 4-H club is one of the greatest projects uh, in my doctorate I did uh, how television internet and video games inter, um, uh, interfere with the relationship between parent and child and uh, so I worked with 24 congressmen in Washington, D.C., uh, in this whole project, which Clinton had, or the, they had allotted $200 million for getting. Why are so many youth going into drugs and all these different things? And they found out that the arsenic hours from 3.30 to 6.30 when, when children are home alone, uh, if they had no activities to do, then they did activities that they could find, which were not things like the 4-H club. And I saw how important they, we determined that faith-based and projects like the 4-H club were the answer to today's youth and tomorrow's youth. To have something to do, the last key kids that do not have things to do. And the, so the more we could get people involved in 4-H club, I mean, look, you've got automobile, 
automotive driving, bicycle safety, bread, chicken cue, dairy food demonstration, egg demonstration, electric energy, lawn tractor driving, photography, and as you mentioned, these high tech that they're all interested in. I mean, ask a five-year-old, I just could go on and on. And I wanted to tell some of the people that are involved in the, I know Anthony Pinkston was right. one of your co chairmen He's co-chair and uh, Dr. Edna Coleman from here at a oh, she's, she's co-chair and they've worked together and done a great job, mm -hmm. uh, put the whole thing together. We'll have uh, hundreds of kids here, uh, young people, I, I still yeah. call them kids. We have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're learning, they're learning socialization skills at the same time they're learning uh, subject matter knowledge. These young people, uh, some of them came in last night because they're from down in Mobile and Baldwin counties, Escambia County and Covington County, right down on the Florida line. They came up a day early and they spent the night last night at the hotel. Wonderful kids, uh, do a great job with whatever they do. Uh, the folks in Extension who work with them and our volunteers, I have to thank them. Our volunteers and parents are just wonderful people to give their time and they're so devoted to our young people, helping them gain these life skills. We have a good time whenever we do 4-H project work. We have a good time when we get together like this. We have some folks who are putting on these tracks, these um, different leadership tracks who are uh, donating their time and their effort also, and we appreciate them. Um, anytime we can get our good volunteers, if you, if you would like to volunteer with 4-H, all you have to do is contact the cooperative extension system at the county level in the county in which you live in Alabama. We can find a way to use your skills and your knowledge uh, we need a lot of volunteers. We're going to start working on that a lot. One thing that I would like to mention, you talked about the time uh, and the research showing how young people who go home after school and don't have productive ways to spend their time end up spending their time sometimes in, in non-productive manners. Uh, we have also are working a lot with after school programs Wonderful. and uh, doing 4-H programming after school in that uh, particular audience. Every day last year in Alabama, between the times of 3 and 6 o'clock, there would be 108,000 kids in an after-school program. That's a great way to tap into an audience and provide experiential learning opportunities. And the research also shows that they shouldn't be doing academic education at that point in time. They need to be doing kid things. things. Yeah. And that's, that's experiential different. learning. 4-H is a perfect fit. And so we're working in that audience too. And Dr. Bob Drakeford on the special staff works with that and is doing a good job with that. Uh, we have uh, also have a lot of natural resource programming. We have a wonderful 4-H center down on Lay Lake. Uh, Alabama, oh, it is so beautiful. Yes, Alabama oh, Power Company. Oh, my granddaughter went there. It's yeah. It's just excellent. Alabama Power Company provides that space for us down there. And uh, we have a wonderful working relationship with them and many other donors from across the state. And uh, that's a wonderful facility. Uh, one of my goals as the new Alabama State 4-H program leader is for Alabama to be known as the place where uh, the most excellent programs are for 4-H natural resources and environmental education. So now we're going to have some competition. This is shown in Connecticut, Maryland, New Jersey, Florida, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and it's not just Alabama, but since Alabama is number one in some areas of, uh, you had mentioned something. Right. right. We have, um, I think that... Uh, so we can be yeah. the pilot program for the, all of these states. Yeah, we have, uh, we're, we're the ones who win the national forestry and wildlife judging in 4-H more than any other states. Uh, we have some folks who really know what they're doing in that area and they do a great job with the young people and I think out of 19 times that they've had national forestry or something like that, we wanted 11 or something. We just, we're really, we're really good in those areas because our people are good and they're passionate about working with young people. And um, that's what we, that's what we like to have is our folks who like to be passionate about young, young people and they want a career track in 4-H and youth development. And we have two great institutions in Auburn University and Alabama A&M University working together with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. If you have some questions about 4-H, again, if you can get to the Internet, you can go in and type it in a search engine. It should send you to us. Uh, and i uh, be glad for you to, to contact us through our website, and we'll try to get you some information and get you uh, in communication with the office that's closest to you. Now, are these people like uh, leading the way, Dr. Donald Mulvaney? I uh, don't know for sure if that's the way to spell it, uh, to pronounce it. 
I don't know if Jerry Davis knows or not, for sure. It's Mulvaney, yes. It's Mulvaney. He, he's okay. a specialist in animal science um, mm -hmm. there at Auburn University, and he works with the leadership a lot there. And um, exploring your future, Dr. Carol Centralo? Dr. Carol Centralo is a, is a family program specialist there at Auburn University, does a great job. Uh, she, she focuses a lot on workforce preparation and financial management, entrepreneurship, those kind of things with young people. Oh, and it's so important for them to see that 85% of the new jobs come from entrepreneurs and very small mm -hmm. businesses. Small business drives in the U.S. economy. That's right. That's uh, the research that we've shown. I see some other workshops, uh, Dr. Walter Harris, Operation Military, and uh, Tyrone Smith and Yvonne Thomas. Tell me a little bit about that. They're, they were on a team that we sent to uh, out west to get some training specifically in the military programming. Um, what, they're, what, what that's for is to try to... Um, provide some uh, training for young people to be sensitive to the special needs of their peers who have a parent deployed overseas. We don't think about that unless it impacts us personally. But these young people who, who are all, life's just charging along and all of a sudden they have a parent deployed for six months or a year to the Middle East in a very dangerous mm -hmm. environment, it changes their lives. And uh, that, so they have some special needs all of a sudden. They have to grow up very rapidly. I've talked to some of these young people. They're actually taking on the role of the parent who is missing. Uh, they're, they're taking care of their siblings. Some of them are, writing the, are, are paying the bills, the household bills as far as writing the checks, keeping up with the budget, these kinds of things. These are teenagers. So they, um, they, their life has changed dramatically and we, we want to be sensitive to that. We want to help other young people be sensitive to those needs. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, Risky Business, Dr. Kathy Latiri, It's a Small World, Dr. Julio Correa, is that how that's pronounced? And Juana Mar uh, Marcias, and I may be in big trouble. Start your engines, I love this. These are all in the School of Engineering uh, where they're gonna be seeing here at A&M. Richard Morris and James Morris, and there's just so many people that are involved that are just donating their time to mm -hmm. make this a better world by working with the young people and working. I may be mm -hmm. applying for some of those jobs online because <laughs> I really do love the 4-H club with all my heart. Something I'd like to say about 4-H, I think 4-H, and of course I'm, I'm biased because I grew up in 4-H and I work with 4-H now, but I think 4-H more closely reflects the citizenry or the mm -hmm. face of Alabama than, than any other youth organization out there. And it's a great place for us to provide educational programming of value to these young people. And we have a lot of very valuable cooperators around the state. We have people who are sponsoring some of these contests. We have people who help us build our buildings at the Alabama 4-H Center. We have people across the state who volunteer their time. And time is the most precious commodity we have, you know. So our volunteers and our donors are very special and very important to the program. They never will know the impact that they have on young people's lives. We keep trying to measure that. But, you know, a young person, we can measure the impact that certain management practices have on a corn crop or a cotton crop or something like this from an agricultural perspective, which we do in extension work but it's very difficult to measure the longitudinal value across time that 4-H has, how much it has impacted lives, because you'll never know that, because, you know, I'm 50 years old and it's still impacting my life Mine and will too. forever. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very valuable part of what we do, but it's a very hard thing to get your, your mind around the value of it. And we try to do that, but it's a tough thing to measure. Yes, uh, it impacted. My grandson doesn't smoke. He's a out of school now, ready to go to college, doesn't drink, doesn't do pot, doesn't do any of those things with a decision that's inside of him that uh, is, has been impacted. So the 4-H is impacting a lot of young people that they make these good decisions on their own. And then when they're out of school and they're ready to go and to college or their own, they have a solid background 
of uh, who they are and what they want to do with their lives. And if we, every time we can get one young person to make those decisions, that it doesn't matter how many meth labs they put in the state of Alabama or any other state, they're not going to participate. They will not be buying whatever they have to offer. And that is, that is exciting to see the impact that this has. Because we found in this research that we did that the very low-income people had buses that took them to after-school programs. The very wealthy people had parents or someone that were free to come drive them to some activities. And But there, it's that middle class that doesn't have maybe one parent working, making a little bit too much money to be on the bus to go somewhere, and not enough money to for someone to pick them up. And that's where the after-school program is so important for that the 4-H is so active in doing that. So I want to thank you very much for uh, being our guest today and for um, telling us about Dr. Lamar Nichols. I almost cry when I think of where would I have been if it hadn't been for 4-H Club. I don't even know if um, any of you would like to know more. Now, you said look on our website. Uh, can you look up 4-H Club? Well, or just go to Alabama Cooperative Extension in your search engine, and it'll put you on our system-wide um, search Not page. Orange, and then all you have to do, it'll give you a link to the 4-H. Okay. Uh, just, if you just go in there in the search engine, it'll throw you to us. We're a .edu, of course. <laughs> uh, and so but just type it in, Alabama Cooperative Extension System, and it'll link you to us. It'll let you see some things with Auburn and let you see some things with Alabama A&M, but 4-H is one of the links from there. Just come to us and if you need to ask us some questions and Tony Cook does, uh, he goes on there and he will respond to you. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Well, we're happy that you joined us today and even though you're seeing this from the state of Alabama, which is the number one uh, state in the 4-H club and some of the pilot program that are going on here, uh, we, you can take away this type of information and go to your own state's uh, extension service. That's correct. Because it doesn't matter what state you're in, they have every state in the United States, as far as I know, yes. has an extension service. They have service. extension, they all have 4-H. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And uh, you can be a part of it either as a youth that would like to participate or as an adult that would like to volunteer or as a uh, potential employee, put your uh, look for the job opportunities and put your resume online and someone will get back to you. And I'm sure other states have some opening too. I'm Bonnie Libhard along with Dr. Lamar Nichols and uh, Jerry Davis and we thank you very much for joining us today.